If your child has been recently diagnosed with hydrocephalus, you probably have a lot of questions. This brochure will provide an overview of the condition and the basics of what you need to know. Hydrocephalus is a condition that occurs when there is a buildup of cerebrospinal fluid in the brain. Cerebrospinal fluid is a clear, watery substance produced within cavities of the brain called ventricles. The cerebrospinal fluid flows over the over the brain and along the spinal cord, providing protection, nutrients, flushing waste, and maintaining a balanced pressure. Hydrocephalus occurs when too much fluid is produced and obstruction occurs or not enough fluid is reabsorbed back into the bloodstream, causing an excess of cerebral spinal fluid within the brain. If left untreated, excess cerebral spinal fluid increases the size of the ventricles and puts pressure on the brain. While hydrocephalus is mostly a genetically acquired disease and present at birth, certain risk factors exist. These factors include infection of the mother during pregnancy, family history of multiple children born with hydrocephalus, in which case genetic testing is recommended. Trauma or injuries to the head during birth or in accidents may also lead to hydrocephalus. Symptoms are different between infants and children due to the fusion of the skull. Infants are, infant skulls are still fusing so they can accommodate for the increase in pressure due to excess fluid. Signs and symptoms in infants include an enlarged head, bulging fontanelle, irritability, vomiting, and seizures. Symptoms in young children are more severe due to a fused skull bone. These symptoms include severe headaches, blurred or double vision, balance and coordination problems, urinary incontinence, chronic lethargy, and irritability or slow development. While no blood laboratory tests can accurately diagnose hydrocephalus, brain imaging tests and cerebral spinal fluid function tests can lead to a positive diagnosis. Ultrasounds are used for neonates and young infants with an open fontanelle, and CAT scans or MRIs of the brain are used for older infants and children. These brain imaging tests would show enlarged ventricles within the brain. A lumbar puncture may also be performed to examine the amount and pressure of cerebrospinal fluid present. Once a diagnosis of hydrocephalus has been made, there are rarely options other than surgery for treatment. Medication management is controversial, but some diuretics may be used for the temporary treatment of post-hemorrhagic hydrocephalus in neonates. These include Diamox and Lasix. Shunts are the preferred therapeutic option for management of hydrocephalus. Shunt, shunts are tiny flexible tubes with a valve mechanism surgically implanted to bypass the cerebrospinal fluid from the ventricles to either the abdominal cavity or to a chamber in the heart known as the right atrium. A shunt may help to control hydrocephalus, but is not a cure. The patient and family should be aware of symptoms associated with shunt complications, including headache, blurred vision, nausea, vomiting, or lethargy. Because hydrocephalus is a long-term condition, patients and family require ongoing follow-up care by a doctor. In response, they should seek assistance and emotional support when needed.